as I know it's been a while since I've made uh, any videos really about the mill, um, but we have been insanely busy on the mill. And so actually I haven't really had time to even think about making videos, but I'm gonna try to get one for you today. Behind me, we've got this 20 foot pine log and we've got an order for three beams to be cut. Uh, one at three and a half by 12 and two at five and a half by 12. So I was sorting out over through my log pile, thinking, okay, this one will make one, this one will make one, this one. And then I thought, you know what? This big guy right here will make all three. So I'm gonna try to get all this laid out <coughs> and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. So first off, when we're talking about cutting beams, well, let's back up even one from there. This mill, Woodmiser LT40, the carriage will travel, it's like 20 foot six or 20 foot eight, something like that. Uh, but in order to have space on this side and the far end of the log, when the carriage comes back and forth, I have to trim my logs down on all my 20 footers. I cut them down to 20 foot two. I normally get my logs in as 20 foot six, and then I trim them to 20 foot two just to make sure that I've got room on both ends. Now, and when we set it up here, uh, we're gonna line it up to where it hangs over here about an inch and a half to two inches. And I've, I've just learned over time that that's about as far as, as I can come in this direction. Now on cutting beams, there's a lot of arguments about you know center cut or box heart or uh, free of heart center. So what we're gonna try to do on this particular log is we're gonna get a little bit of both. Um, I, my plan is to set up my AccuSet. This is a really nice straight log. It doesn't have a lot of crazy bow in it. So we're gonna try to get our five and a half right here as a boxed heart. And we're gonna try to get a three and a half to either side. Now they're five and a half by 12 and three and a half by 12. Uh, so I'm not quite drawn to scale. And then off all of our side cuts, we've actually got an order for nominal sawn one by sixes uh, by 16 feet. And so we're gonna also pull flat sawn one by sixes off the side of this as we square up our camp for our beams. So this could be a really, really uh, productive log for us. And that's something, you know, when you get into milling a lot like this, you really have to get to where you can start to read the logs and start to kind of plan. If you get multiple orders, try to plan how you can maximize the value out of your logs and obviously minimize waste. So let's get this set up on the mill. We're gonna get a new blade put on. <coughs> <laughs> get all of our fuel, water, get everything ready. We're gonna throw this baby up there and make a little money. All right, so let's go ahead and get this log loaded up. This LT40, one of my biggest gripes is uh, they have this contact strip. And on this particular mill, we clean the contact strip all the time and it still will only make contact at certain places. So I gotta figure out where it's at. <laughs> I've always got to go through and see. And actually, before I forget, let me trim this edge off, this little burr off here. So we're going to get it rolled up here. Uh, if you guys pay attention, you can stay right in front of the camera. Oh, yeah. So if you guys pay attention, I'm going to give you pretty much all my secrets in this one video. Uh, we've got our log clamp all the way out to the side closest to the log and just as soon as this log rolls on I'm gonna raise that clamp up because a lot of times you'll roll the log on and it wants to roll back out towards the loading arms. You don't want to miss it. So it's on, clamp up. And we'll leave, just God forbid something stupid happens, we're gonna leave our arms up while we situate this log. First is roll it over here, get it where it's sitting steady. Oh boy, sunk down. And now we gotta get our tow rollers up, tail rollers. Get a log clamp off of it so it's not touching at all. Now on the front right here, we're hanging over about eight inches over that uh, plate. What I used to do at first, before I got smart, 
I would load the log intentionally to the far end and then I would use a ratchet strap back here to my edger and pull it back. But I realized the other day that it's a lot easier and a lot more precise to just use a two by four and pry against our hydraulic box here. And when we scoot it right up to exactly where we want it. That, that, that'll clear. Yeah. There we go. About two, two and a half inches hanging over. So now again, the hydraulics, for whatever ignorant reason, don't want to work when the mill is all the way back. So I'm going to leave the saw head way up high and work underneath of it as far as getting this log rolled where I want it. Okay, it's, it's just kind of, it's, it's up underneath it, stabbing it directly yeah. out. Hang on, let me get the clamp under. That's uh, frustration number 35 for you guys. Um, if the log has any bow at all to it, which this one has a little bit of bow down, that stupid log claw will flip up and it want to go to the left of the log inside or it'll want to come right up underneath of it. And then it doesn't have the leverage to actually roll it. So you have to get creative with your log clamp to help roll it to get the log clamp on the, out, the, the roller, the turner, on the outside. Once you get that claw on the outside, don't put it all the way down as you're cutting. Keep it down low where you're not going to hit it, but don't fold it all the way down to the bed because then you'll be fighting to get it back up again. So this is just a preference for me. I like to, when I've got a bowed log, I like to start it with the bow down in the middle with the, the arch in the middle of the log down and the, the bowed ends basically both up on top. And then we'll adjust our tail rollers just to support it. And also, I do always start, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see in the video or not, my little sketch on here. It doesn't matter. That sketch can be drawn any which way. I just drew that to show you guys. Um, I always do like to start, also as a habit, I always put the small end of the log towards the console. Some people, you know, there's a whole, whole camp on that as far as which way you're supposed to go. But now we've got it where we need to have it. We're going to put our loading arms back down. Right about there, we can drop our strap. And let's cut it.
All right, I got a client here to look at some lumber, so we'll All start right. this up later. All right, so now we've finished our first top cut. And basically, like I said, I'm gonna try to get uh, a five and a half box part beam out of the middle, five and a half by 12, and then a three and a half to either side, which is gonna be kind of creative on my set works to set it up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up now before I start making the next cut, just so I've got the program ready. Uh, but basically I'm gonna run two programs. So each beam is 12 inches high. So the three and a half by 12, five and a half by 12. So I'm gonna run two programs. One of those is gonna be three quarter inch thick down to 12. The other one is gonna be three quarter inch thick down to three and a half, five and a half, three and a half. Um, and then I'll just sit there and roll and roll and roll and roll and roll the log to square it down to the cant and then we'll split our beam. So already here on the top on this finished cut, I've got 11 inches, which three and a half times two is seven, plus five and a half, I need 12 and a half. Really splitting about 13 inches. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll, and we're gonna make our next cut to get 90, and then we'll get our program. Well, I'll go ahead and set my programs up now. So let me show you how that works. So this is the AccuSet, if you guys aren't familiar. We go to our patterns, and I'm gonna look through. Somewhere I've got, there was a program that was already in three quarters. And these can be reset anytime you want, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. But I try to keep some of the standard size cuts on the first one. And then when I do special beams, I normally go to the fourth button. So you got four, eight, 12, and 16. This is one inch to three and a half, one inch to 10. That was because I was cutting three and a half by 10 the other day. Here's three quarter to inch and a half and inch and a quarter all the way down. So let's go to this three quarter by inch and a half. And instead, we're gonna reset it <laughs> to Three quarter, you see when I start going down, it resets everything. We're gonna come down three quarter to 12. And just run her all the way up here. And really this thing, like I said, it can, it can go to 30 seconds of an inch. So it says never that close to detail, it doesn't matter. Once we get her set three quarter by 12, we hit our manual button, up, up. It prompts us to save, save twice. So now we go back to our pattern and it's there saved. So that was on number 12. And then on number 16, we're gonna go three quarter down to our uh, three and a half, five and a half, three and a half. Shoot. This thing gets either like painfully slow or zips up so fast that you can't keep up. Three quarter, and then we hit that, it's gonna go all the way down. Our last three, we're gonna go three and a half. And this is just, there's different ways that you can set your programs. Um, I have found that, see, I wish like I could do right now, set this one to five and a half and be done. And actually maybe it will. Let me try something. I've never tried this before without hitting the save button. Cause I've already got the three and a half on bottom. Like I like it. This is the first time I've ever run a multi program like this to where I, I do multiple different sizes on the bottom. Normally I just do some, you know, one size all the way down to another. Oh, I've already passed five and a half. <laughs> so if I go manual save save let's go back to that pattern it's there still there cool okay so we're set up on that let's uh get to cutting again all right <laughs> okay <coughs> so we got our program set up let's get this log rolled over and i want to go ahead and set up the programs because i'm going to go ahead and start taking off three quarter strips uh, to get this log kind of down the size a little bit more. What in the heck happened there? So now we're going to start working our way down until we get to where on this side here we've got a clean 90. So we're going to take a couple of strips out of here of that three quarter by six um, so we can start building towards that other order for the guy.
go ahead and work these down. Take a couple three quarter inch. I'm about to cut this video off because I've got my phone sitting on the edge here. Once we start the edge, it's going to vibrate fall off. We're going to go ahead and take a couple three quarter inch strips off here until we get that clean 90, and then we'll roll it and we'll start shaking down for our can. Okay, so what we have now, we've made our uh, second roll, which means we're making our third cut basically, and we're working down through it three quarter inches at a time. But this is the point where you would normally go down through it flat saw and set up your can. But because I'm trying to hone in on that bullseye at the middle, I'm not just going to pick where it's at now and just go down through it. Um, I'm actually going to keep rolling. I mentioned that earlier in the video. I'm going to roll, cut, roll, cut, roll, cut. And that's also because on these 20 foot long boards, we tend to see some sag on the ends of the log. It, you know, it could be stress relief, whatever. We tend to have thin or thick ends. We're still trying to figure that out. And so when we roll it, cut, roll it, cut, roll it, cut, it tries to minimize that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is roll again. We're gonna get this uh, last cut set up on top and we're gonna start working down towards shaping it as a, as a 12 inch can. Um, and so yeah, like I said, now we're gonna go into that set of just Again, roll it, cut it, roll it, cut it, roll it, cut it. I could go ahead and roll 180 right now, cut another three quarter off the other side, roll 180, cut another three quarter, but I don't want that rounded edge against my log top. It shouldn't matter really, because we've got a flat base that'll lay flat on the deck, but it just kind of annoys me to have a rounded edge against the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off the top. It's not gonna be 12 inches yet. We're gonna cut one or two passes off the top, and then we'll start squaring down. All right, so we've rolled and cut a few. You can see we've got a pile of slabs starting up here. We've been feeding them through the edger, but it's doing something kind of funky. It's wanting to pull one side, so Joe's working on that right now. But we've just made our final cut here to be 12 inches high. And you can see it's actually reading 12 and over a quarter, um, which is part of that thickness issue we've been dealing with. Let's see if I come down here towards the middle of the beam though. Let's see what it says. Yeah, less than 12. Oh, that's genius. And no, my tow rollers are not up. So everybody's gonna say, oh, you had a tow roller up. No, that's not the case. Look at that. <laughs> that's a bullet. Big old slug. And we're high again on the end. So yeah, so to me, this is, if you're thick on the ends and you're thinner in the middle, the thin in the middle is because we are, that's just because I have my AccuSet set to where it's, was cutting a little thin. I was trying to do that on purpose, thinking maybe that was the problem. We're thick on the ends because the cant tries to sag a little bit. These lower, these end supports, I believe, both need to be jacked up a little bit. <coughs> but hey, take a look at that slug. Is that cool or what? Uh, our blade didn't, our cut didn't go to crap after hitting it. So we actually might get lucky on this one, hit metal with the blade and be okay. All right, so anyway, now that we've made our 12 cut, our, you know, 12 and a quarter slash 12 and a bit cut, um, we're going to go ahead and roll to get back on our program of the three and a half, five and a halves. And then what we're going to do is get all this situated here. Get our claw down. Get our stops down because we're starting to get down to where we might actually hit our stops. Now we're going to pull the head back. And I want to go ahead and work down to see... I want to go ahead and see where... We're gonna land out on the program. So if we start up here above the pit somewhere, we're gonna switch our pattern to here. Three and a half, five and a half. That tells me we're wanting to cut on our three and a half right now. So I think that's gonna cut the three and a half. Nope, that says it's gonna be the five and a half can't. Yeah, so we're at nine and a bit right now. So that would be our three and a half or five and a half. And basically we've got a three and a half up here. So actually let's do this. We're actually really close. We might already be where we need to be. <laughs> so there's a three quarter cut. There's a three and a half cant. There's a five and a half cant and a three and a half cant. Look at that. So we're gonna take the one more three quarter cut or no? No, it wasn't, right? Come back up there where we were. Oh, that's stupid lucky. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't realize I was already that close. So that's a cut. That's, yeah, our next cut's three and a half. But again, so you see, there's gonna be a three and a half cant that's gonna be free of heart center. 
five and a half cant. It's not quite a perfectly boxed heart, but pretty close. I should have, I should have taken it uh, where I took one more three quarter off this side and left a three quarter on that side. That would have raised that up. Uh, but it is technically a box heart. It's not, none of the heart is touching the edge. And then we leave a three and a half on the bottom. So let's make these last two cuts and we'll be done. All right, well, damage is done. And like I said, I couldn't get you the video of it actually happening just because what else we were doing. But um, you see what we ended up with. We've got our three and a half by 12 here. It's, it's technically a three and a half, or it's uh, technically a free of heart center beam, which is supposed to be the best. Um, this one's actually pretty good, but it is a flat saw. And, you know, if I could choose and you had to be like this, I would rather the rings be going the other way and then it'd be quarter sawn. But it's just, that would take an absolutely tremendous size log. For, for me to try to get a 12 inch wide beam, quarter sawn, free of heart center, I would need a, you know, minimum 26 to 28 inch, perfectly, perfectly straight log. And then I could get these beams you know, off the side of the log versus off the top and bottom. Uh, but we've got our other three and a half by 12 here, also flats on, and then our five and a half by 12, which is box art. So yay, done so. Ended up with, um, I don't know, 10 or 12 of the one by sixes also off the side. So a nice little bonus check there. But let's go ahead and get these off the mill and uh, see what else we got to cut today.